Hello fellow traders. Now I do want to apologize ahead of time because I'm sure this initial view is probably giving you severe anxiety. But the whole purpose of this video is to try to point out quite a few different logical things and then explain and kind of show you why psychology does not really apply. <laughs> now if you've been following this series uh, since the beginning, great great thanks and great love. I appreciate all the support so far. Let's keep that going. Uh, if you're just now coming into this, make sure you check out the playlist uh, for the walkthrough. It's going to show you exactly how we got here, what we've been thinking along the way, and what we're intending to do with the plan overall, as well as all of our options. So, if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, make sure you subscribe, uh, leave a like. It helps the channel grow. I uh, guess this out to more people so they can stop wasting money on courses and start making money in the market because it really is, you know, not that big of a deal for the drawdown of what you see, which I'm going to explain. And it is fairly easy to use a few different tools and methods just to kind of give yourself an advantage from any position. Right now, I'm viewing this as a very strong position. But what we're going to go over in this video is I'm going to show you basically why psychology should not be affecting you why this should not be causing anxiety i mean i'm even going to show you still i'm holding the same positions and the other uh funded account i'm gonna flip the screen real quick let's see hopefully it doesn't mess up the video let's go there and you can see we're in only about halfway to our max limit and that's going to be rather important here in just a moment, uh, especially when we start to consider things like our drawdown. Uh, we're going to take a look at this account. And right now, the balance is at 900. We've made the adjustment. And these are all the positions in the account. Notice everything's red. And right now, we're at about close to a 13 or so percent drawdown. So. We can really handle up to about 35% or so drawdown, even with a 1 to 50 leverage, before anything really becomes an issue. Now, let's go ahead and take a zoom out. Um, we'll even do the cal quick calculation real quick, just to show you, uh, for those who don't want to do the math, we're down 122 out of a 900. We're at about 13.5% drawdown. So I wouldn't even really consider that concernable. The second reason why I am so nonchalant about this is because, of course, everything is pre-calculated. Now, if you look at this, you notice in this account, from the start, we've already had this intention with the rule of thumb. We're going a little bit higher uh, on the leverage here, uh, so we can use a little bit higher position and allow more drawdown. We can actually handle probably about 60 to 65% drawdown in this account, but we're still roughly... Uh, let's see, we had a 15.25, so let's go ahead and see what we had here worked out. We're at about 3.48 euros down out of 100. So we're at about 23%, which is only about a third of what our real drawdown is. So, uh, that's going to bring me to the very next point that we're going to cover here. Let me get the crosshair out. One thing you'll notice, um... For those of you who've been following me, you'll notice that each one of these positions is on what looks to be, by definition, a level. Uh, if you've checked out the support and resistance is not subjective, um, that will kind of give you a really good idea of how you can find the sim same or similar type areas and levels of what I'm looking at so that uh, you can kind of more... Uh, understand how I'm pulling some of these horizontal levels uh, and then what we've done is basically use these levels to structure our risk and drawdown planning now we keep talking about the drawdown and how it looks severe despite you know the whole situation with the severe fall the severe uh, stacking of positions and this one we are at a point uh, three in total you can see three of the point ones in play so but everything is still apologies everything is still in control and as far as this goes and we could actually end up let me get my cursor back we could actually end up going way down here 
and still be within range and within our planned drawdown limits. So even at this point, we don't have to add in too much because right now we're looking at a break even of around here for this position. And if you're a price action trader, you know when it drops out hard, typically it will at least come back up to, I would expect, at least the original position. And we always understand and know that the market doesn't go in the same direction forever. The next thing you'll notice is that usually... Usually, the price will at least give some reaction, and if it doesn't, then typically it will uh, respect it on the way back. This is something I've covered probably in a way later video, uh, video uh, in some of my other probably discretionary video or a few other places, and I probably did mention it a few times in the support and resistance video. So... Uh, I know we kind of should be looking for and expecting some of these levels to get used and reacted to. We can kind of see some wicks here and in this area, but I wouldn't really call that use. So now, at this point, we're looking for the for the retracement. The market is going to try to stay in balance. So when it pushed up, it started to retrace down hard, but then it came back, it covered in, retraced again on that up push, and then pushed up again. We had kind of a shallow retracement here, shallow retracement here, went up, now we have a double top pattern, but there's that retracement again. So you look at this as an overall and the retracement. So this is basically what we're waiting to happen on next. I don't know if it's going to happen here, it could 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 happen here. And this is all well within range of our scope of what we're look, planning for to look at in our trade and allow for. This is already pre-calculated, so we don't have to panic. It can still continue going even just a little bit further. It's just been on a steady downturn for quite some time. Now, we do have some ECB news, but uh, I noticed the dollar index has been constantly pushing higher. And with the ECB taking such a hit, and the euro against dollar taking such a hit, the euro bank is probably going to make some adjustment to try to compensate for this. And then, of course, you have sellers that are going to be very cautious about going short for long. They're going to actually wait for this retracement to get in, so we're going to have a, a drying up of the volume for shorts. And then, of course, the way the price ladder works and trading and how price moves, either a trade has to take place, or a price has to be found that traders can agree on. And what's going to happen is there aren't going to be very many orders down here. Everybody's going to want to buy, so market orders will go up for buy. That'll drive up the demand. And then, of course, the sellers not wanting to take the other side. Other sellers jumping in market will have to get in at a higher price. Or even potentially worse off position than what they want. Pay a higher spread potentially even if you're using a spread account. Uh, you'll notice that price may be pushing higher uh, in regards to looking for uh, the long side versus the short. I know you can notice the average price sometimes will be closer to one side or the other if you're using a spread account. So that's one of the ways you can kind of see it without having an order volume but naturally that's what's happening price will be skipping along skipping prices to find the next order and it will just gradually work its way up that'll eventually cause a frenzy in the rest of the market and should hopefully pull it up but where that's going to happen from i'm not sure we do have a pile of levels here so you mean to tell me that price doesn't usually go through a level without at least doing something around it or in between it and it's gone three levels without really doing anything different other than just going in a straight line that tells me that eventually one of these levels when it does trigger and hit it's going to hit hard that's just out of experience now if you're doing a supply and demand strategy you could say this is your proximal and whatever line and you got a demand possibly coming from here so this is most likely a level i'm just taking a guess planning my risk and trying to catch a wide range so so far i've been trying not to analyze but uh, i kind of have to in this case to kind of show you the overall of the plans and what kind of things you're looking for when you're pre-planning a trade and kind of the things i looked at because we didn't really start this series at the very beginning of the trade but these are kind of 
things I'm accounting for. I want to give a wide range. So in this one here, notice we had a $600 hard stop or 600 euro hard stop. And ultimately what that's going to result in is we would have to hedge. But we've still got so much more room for it to do what it's going to do. We're just going to have to be patient a little bit and let it come, come back. And in most cases, especially with this hard of a move, it's going to try to come back somewhere at least to here, I would expect. And all it has to do is cross here and we're profitable. So no matter how bad this can get, we're set up by our spread of positions, our break even point being brought with us as we come down. So all we need is a little movement back up and we're in the green. So... There's no reason to get anxious about what it looks like or worry about it. This should all be pre-planned and predetermined. And as you can see and tell, uh, you may have to turn your head a little sideways when we had that up with the positions. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's all part of the plan. So you really should not have any real concerns over the situation itself. It's kind of a shame that the deposit was made and we ended up just making the adjustment here and then it kind of dropped out soon after. But, I mean, if you look at the overall picture, it looks bad, but math never lies and the math says there's nothing wrong with this, even on this account here. I mean, we still got plenty of margin available. We're only using 260 because we have a 1 to 50 leverage on this account. We're only 125 in drawdown, about 13.6%, 13.5%. And we have a very short distance to go for break even. And there's no way you can convince me that it's not at least going to come back to one or two of these levels where these positions were set. Because if you notice, uh, as we looked at in the beginning of the video, these trades are on levels. And we've got a heavy concentration of levels here. We haven't respected any on the way down other than to use them as a springboard to go lower. So eventually, once the volume draws up on the short side, it's going to rocket right back up just as fast. Maybe a little bit slower than it came down, but it's going to be pretty quick about getting back up here. So that's just the nature of the Euro USD, and it's pretty clear in the chart. It does this over and over and over again. Now we've got a situation here as such, but if we went back to replay, we used our levels for planning, it's very possible we could have managed out of this getting unscathed and maybe not making anything. But the way these reacted back up far enough, came back, you could work this out and even work out some other ways. That'll be a topic for another video though. That actually might be, uh, I'll make note of this, We'll reuse this little pattern here because that's a pretty steep drop off. So we got 12, 333 all the way down to 104. So that's about a 600 pip drop and we're only uh, planning for three. So of course 300 is less than six and that would put us in a pickle. So we would have to actually use that as a great reference and pretend we don't know what's going to happen and I'll show you how we would handle a situation like that because I know a lot of you are worried about that one time and one off scenario of blowing account blowing your account and I can assure you there are ways to handle that that I've already shown but we'll put this all together in a walkthrough video probably by itself and kind of work out how we would handle that situation I still don't think it's very likely that we're gonna wind up doing that again not from here, because notice it was also kind of wide leading up to that, so that's kind of a scale issue. Another video I still need to kind of get to. Uh, so still a couple more topics, but just be sure to leave your questions, uh, likes and comments and so forth. And don't forget to subscribe, and I will go ahead and wrap this up and see you on the next video. But for now, just remember, hold steady. Don't worry. It's all pre-planned. -pre you notice the drawdown is not that big a deal despite what you've been taught and it's pretty clear to see the market does do retracement this is the law of balance so just wait it out and the market will eventually help us out and we are set up to catch that and take advantage of it whenever it decides to do so so just 
keep an eye out and relax. Go find something to do uh, for a little while because this could take a few more uh, days or even weeks. But I would suspect within one to two weeks we should see the completion of this trade. So uh, stay tuned and make sure to stay on top of each video and I'll keep you posted. We'll see, I'll see you on the next one.